This video will cover section 6.7, the dot product. And it's being recorded in um, the spring semester of 2018. So uh, this is one of the operations that is used with vectors. And it does have a significance. We will get to it in a minute. And what we're going to do first uh, is, of course, do the dot product. And then we'll um, expand that with some properties of the dot product. Um, so let's see. Consider you have two vectors. and one is vector b and the other one is vector w and they're both written in terms of i and j and so what you see here for a sub one is just a number b sub one is just a number so the one is just a subscript remember that here we have a sub two to identify the um coefficient of the i of the second vector and then here we have b sub two as well and so if we look at the formula and I don't want you to think that we're going to multiply a vector times the other. We're going to multiply something from them. But the fact that you see a dot here, I don't want you to think that this is as simple as 2 times 3 times 2. Okay? It's not like that. It's not just that. All right? So with numbers, yeah, we could do that. That's what the dot implies, multiplication. But when you have vectors, you have to multiply the horizontal components together. And then the vertical components together, or the coefficients of those components. Um, and so, of course, we need to add them. So that's why we say here the dot product of two vectors is the, is the sum of the products of their horizontal components and their vertical components. So it's actually very simple to apply it. And you might hear sometimes professors refer to it as, we could say something for, for this expression, they could call it B dotted with W. So yes, they kind of made it into a verb. OK, and so we have two sets of vectors here, well, one set, uh, one pair. And so we have B dotted with W. So negative 15 to I. OK, so I'm going to do it the slow way first. So the negative 15 is coming from 5 times negative 3, right, Andrew? Yeah. And then we need to add the product of the vertical components. So in this case, the negative 2 and the positive 4. So negative 2, positive 4. And so we get negative 15 minus 8, and that would be negative... Negative 24. Four, I mean 23. Three. We're let off one number today. Uh -huh. So I want you to realize this, that the dot product, just like the magnitude, is a one number and one number only. Okay. So it's not going to be a composition of i and j. It's just one number. That's the dot product. Now, why do we care about the dot product? Well, later on, I'll just give you a tiny preview. If that dot product is equal to 0, And so when the dot product is equal to zero, what that means is that the vectors are perpendicular. And so that has a lot of significance in physics because sometimes we want to force them to be orthogonal. And so that's going to be kind of like the end of the lesson. We're going to do this thing, well, almost to the end, that is called a projection of a vector. I remember the first time I explained this, I almost cried because the student, I said, uh, no one wants to see the proof, right? And then, like, of course, everyone said no. And then this one guy. So we get to today? Not today, we're not going to get to it. But yeah, I, I'm pretty good at doing it. This guy was like, uh, I do, I want to see it. And so now he's doing a PhD, he's doing a PhD in the fall in physics. I think I talked to you guys about it. 
Yeah. <laughs> that how, right. how old is he? In Tennessee. And I see. Uh, well, he's there because he is turning into a musician. Oh, okay. he, he actually has an album on, on Apple Music. Oh, he's a physicist too? Yeah. yeah. So you can be smart and cool. Yeah, well, what was your question? How old, how old is he? I think he started at 25. 25 and already on? Well, starting to. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And so, yes, I will do this later on, okay? Not today, Wednesday, probably. And yes, that actually, also, it's, it's very applied in physics. So I take credit for that if I talk to him through that too. So, you, so do you think he should pay you because he made his album? I think you should come and talk to my students. Stop. <laughs> I'm going to try it. If it comes to me, I'll pass all, all of my. Okay, so let's go over the properties quickly. Dot product is commutative. That means that you can, the order doesn't matter. Oh, and we didn't finish the other one. Sorry. So you guys do part B. We do part B. And I'll do part C. So can you do a dot product? With the same vector? Yes. Obviously. that we have on the next slide, it says that dot product is commutative. So the order doesn't matter. You get the same. Can you do dot product with the same vector? Yes. And that's really nice. So if you guys want to write it down. And then let's go over the property. So we have commutative. Write it down, please. And then the next one, you guys can see that all, there are all vectors. However, the first two in the parentheses are adding to each other. And then after that, the dot product is being uh, done with vector u uh, dotted with v right here. And then vector u dotted with w like we have here. So it's kind of like distribution and associative, I guess. Let's put distributive. And then the next one, it says if you, do you guys remember, I told you, if the letter or number is bolded, it's perpendicular. It's a vector, right? So yes, that's a very good assumption or conclusion. Um, so here, the, this is the zero vector and this is the zero number. You guys see how one is skinny and the other one is not? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So if the zero vector, do you guys remember anything about the zero vector? We wrote down so that it didn't have something and something. It was lacking of direction, skinny, and magnitude. Very oh, nice, Matthew. Oh, okay. Point. Direction Point. and magnitude. Very good. And so if we multiply, it, not multiply, sorry, if we dot the zero vector with any vector, we will get the number zero, which means that they are perpendicular, like Andrew was saying. Per 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 perpendicular, and we orthogonal, right? So your word of the day. Actually, one time, do you guys hate one? No. Yes. And he does. So one time my son was trying to do something, and then like, oh, I tried to do something too. I with a skateboard, and I told him like he couldn't do it, and then I was like, just kidding. You can't because your center of gravity is not orthogonal with your like, like something like that. And like, he was like, what? But Alpha understood where I was coming from. Um, but anyways. Maybe I can bring a table and show you. You're going to do tracing? Yeah. 
Do you guys kick flip? No, I don't know. Okay. Anthony can do a flip. Okay, next. Can you do a dot product with the same vector? Yes, we did that. And that actually is called the magnitude squared. So do you guys remember how we get the magnitude if it's written in terms of i and j? We do the following. We use this formula. So would there just be like no square square root? Correct. So then if we square if we square both sides, then the magnitude square will just be a square plus b squared, which is what we did. Um, let me go back to the other slide. On the on this one, right? That is a square plus b squared. Right. So the magnitude squared. Okay, now we have a very small proof here. It's very short, very simple. Um, it just looks kind of like confusing because of the little subscripts. So what we're going to do is uh, we have a triangle here. Is this a right triangle? Uh, is it? No, absolutely not. It's not. So what we're going to do is and this is going to be one of the main um, topics of this section, finding the angle in between two vectors. Okay, and this will be very useful in physics, I promise. And so we have two vectors in question, u and w. And later on, we're going to see how we'll find the angle. But for now, we're just going to concentrate in finding the distance of this side right here. All right? And you'll know if we're finding distance, we use this as formula, correct? So for vector u, the magnitude of that, which is the distance, is going to be given by this formula right here. So it's already there for us. And they got that by using the points, initial and terminal points. So it's kind of like right here, this is x1, y1, x2, y2, something like that. Actually, they haven't inverted, but it's OK because they're, they're being squared. And then here, this magnitude of, um, of vector v and w, instead of using the distance formula, we're just using Pythagorean theorem, right? So why is that? Why is it that to find the magnitude of u, we have to use distance formula? And then to find the magnitude of v and w, we only use Pythagorean theorem. So there's a good reason for it. You can see it. What's different? Okay, what's similar about B and W? The The initial point is the origin. That's why. So because the initial point is already at the origin, we could just take the um, subscripts. So we're doing this. The initial point is 0, 0. And for W, the terminal point is here. So it's like vector W, it will be A sub 2 I plus B sub 2 J. And then vector B will be, this is the initial point and this is the terminal point. So it will be A sub 1 I Remember the subscript has no value, it's just a label. Plus B sub 1, J. Yeah, are we okay with that? So because they're written in J, I, and J form, we only use Pythagorean theorem. That's why. Okay, so I'm going to use this formula to start, and I want to ask you a question. Does that look familiar, that formula? To, I mean, maybe with A, B, C. Yeah. What does it look like? Uh, oh. Sign? Sign? Uh, 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 Cosines, yeah, yeah. 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 yes. And I'll write it here so you can remember. It used to be something like A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2B squared. Very nice. Huh? Cosine of what angle? What if we have lowercase yeah. a here, then we have to have the angle of that one, right? So we're doing the same thing 
It's just that we're going to use magnitude, okay? And we already know what we're, what expressions we're going to use for magnitude because they're here. They're given to us in the little tiny bubbles. Okay, so for u, magnitude of u squared, we will have a sub 1 minus a sub 2 squared plus b sub 1 minus b sub 2 squared. And then we have a square root. And then we're going to square it, right? So what's going to happen with the square root? It's going to cancel. Cancel. All right. Well, we'll take care of that on the next row. Then we need the magnitude of b, but squared. So a sub 1 squared plus b sub 1 squared inside the square root. But then we square it. So the square root cancels the square root. Then we have the magnitude of w squared. So the square root of w is right here. a sub 2 squared plus b sub 2 squared. And then remember we're squaring it because that's part of the law of cosines formula. Okay, the next part, we're just going to leave it written in, in those terms like that, okay? And it's just for the, for the purpose of the formula I'm trying to prove. So minus... I'm going to write it below here. 2, magnitude of V, magnitude of W, and then cosine of theta. Okay, now we're going to simplify this a little bit. Okay, so we already established that the square root here gets canceled with the square, so we just have A sub 1 minus a sub 2 square plus b sub 1 minus b sub 2 square and it's equal to a sub 1 square plus b sub 1 square right because we cancel the square roots same thing here cancel the square roots so we just have a sub 2 square plus b sub 2 square and then we have minus all this stuff 2 times magnitude of b magnitude of w cosine theta. All right. I know it looks a little scary. So now what I'm going to do, you guys see the two expressions in parentheses, right? They're two binomials. So I'm going to square them. Like if I had something like x plus 2 and then I square it. So I told you, you multiply, you square the first term, x squared. And then you square the second term, that will be a 4, right? 2 squared is 4. And then the one in the middle is the product of x times 2, that's 2x. And then what do we do with that? Double. We double it, so it's 4x. Yeah? So I'm going to do the same thing here. It's going to be looking weird because of the subscripts. But remember, I'm not going to uh, quiz you or test you on this proof. I just want you to see it. So this will be square a sub 1, so a sub 1 squared. The next one is the product of a sub 1 times a sub 2, but negative. And then we double it. So negative 2, a sub 1, a sub 2. Like that. And then we square a sub 2. So a sub 2 squared. Now we're going to do the same thing here. So that's going to be b sub 1 squared minus 2 times the product of b sub 1 times b sub 2. The right side is still the same. And now what I want you guys to start looking for is for things that, terms that we have in common on both sides. Because if we have it on both sides, we could cancel. Right? So can you guys see some? Yes, right? So we have an a square, uh, a sub one square on the left, and we got one on the right. So right there, those two cancel because that equals zero. What else do we cancel? Very good. B sub two square. What else? What about b sub one square? Here, here. And there's one more. Am I missing it? Yeah, I'm missing it. I forgot to write it. Sorry. So right here I forgot to write minus b sub 2 squared. 
So that's the other one that we cancel minus b sub two square. To the yeah, right. Oh, it's a plus. It's a plus because we're squaring it. My bad. We'll cancel that with that. Yes. Okay, so we are left with certain things like negative 2, a sub 1, a sub 2. We also have negative 2 times b sub 1, b sub 2. And then we have on the right side, we just have negative 2 magnitude of v, magnitude of w cosine of theta. Now, you can see clearly that they all have the negative 2, right? Yes? So if we divide everything by negative 2, here they cancel, right? Because it's equal to 1. So now we have a sub 1, a sub 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 equals plus 1. So plus b sub 2, b sub, b sub 1, b sub 2. And here, the negative 2 and the negative 2 equal a positive 1. So we get the magnitude of that times, or not times, uh, yeah, times the magnitude of w times the cosine of theta. And so from the first slide, we had already established that this was the formula for what? Look on your first box. Mm -hmm. This is the formula for dot product. Right there. So what is this? We call it uh, the alternative form of the dot product. And it's the same. We will get the same, yes. So when would you use this one? Well, you would use this one if you were to have the magnitudes and the angle in between. But if you have it written in terms of i and j, like you did at the first example, then you would use that one. OK, now I'm going to use that formula to derive the next two. And so this is what we got, the alternative formula for the dot product. The space here was just to finish the proof. Okay, so now let's look at this formula and let's solve for cosine. I want you guys to do it. So cosine theta equals something. So we already have B dotted with W. And then we have two magnitudes that are doing what to the cosine? Multiply. Multiply, so if we take them both across, they divide. They divide. And they will still be multiplying each other, but here in the denominator, just like that. But we might use that sometime as well. Now I want you guys to, let's say that I want you to find the angle. So you will have to solve for theta. So how can you cancel cosine? Inverse of cosine. So we'll take the cosine inverse. of all that stuff. And remember that what's in, what's in the parentheses is not a vector, it's a number, okay? That should be. Hmm. Okay, and so that is the formula to find the angle between two vectors to the ones that we've been deriving. So, you know, if you forget this formula, you could just derive it with the law of cosine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that hard. Anyway, I'm not sure if I want you to memorize them. Yay. Okay. So now let's see how we're going to use the formula. So, first of all, um, the cosine theta is equal to the dot product divided by the magnitudes of the two vectors. Yeah, that's not too hard to remember. And then if we want to solve for theta, you already know that it's the cosine inverse of all of that. Okay, so do we know how to find the dot product? Of course, yes, we do. So 
number one, find the dot product of V and W. So that's the one where you multiply the coefficient of the, the coefficients of the horizontal component. So it's three times. Here we have a negative i, so the coefficient we assume to be what? Number negative one. And then plus, there's a plus in that formula, and then we do the same but with the vertical coefficient component. So four times negative two, or negative two times four, because we already established this commutative, right? As long as you don't mix the x with the y's, we have to keep the x's with the x's, the y's with the y's. So the dot product will end up being negative 3 minus 8, which is negative 11. Yeah. Okay, now do we know step number 2 finds the magnitude of one of them? So for example, that. So we could say the square root of... Of 3 minus 2 square root? Oh, right here. 3 square plus negative 2 squared. And we want to make sure we put a plus here. This is like a variation of the distance formula of Pythagorean theorem. This will be 9 plus 4, which will be the square 13. root of 13. So let's save this for later. Now, step number 3 is going to be to find the magnitude of the other one, which is W. So that's going to be, we're focusing here. So negative 1 squared plus 4 squared. So that will be the square root of 1 plus 16, which will be the square root of Five. 17. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, now those three numbers. So the first one is the dot product. Second one is the magnitude of V. The third one is the magnitude of W. We're going to use those three numbers and put them here in our formula right here. So we're going to substitute a number for this, another one for this one, and another one for this one. So the angle is going to be cosine inverse of the dot product, which is negative 11 over the square root of 13 times the square root of 17. And make sure your calculator is in degrees. And we want to round it to the nearest tenth of a degree. So if you don't have a calculator, please go grab one. Okay, for checkpoint two, I'm going to list the steps. Find, number one, find the dot product. Two, find the magnitude of V. Three, find the magnitude of W. And then four, use the formula to find theta, which is cosine inverse of the dot product here. Remember, that's going to be a number that comes from here. And then the magnitude of V that will come from here. And then the magnitude of W.
good. Okay, let's check our answer. So, dot product, so I got negative 2. For magnitude of B, I'm going to say 16 plus 9, 25, so square root of 5? Yes. Okay. And then for the magnitude of W, square root of 5. Okay. I agree. Okay, so then here for theta, it's going to be the cosine inverse of the dot product, which is a number, just negative 2, right? That takes place of this. And then on the bottom, we're going to have the 5, and then the square root of 5, like that. And remember, these two magnitudes are just multiplying each other. So if we just leave 5 next to the square root, that already implies multiplication. And then, you guys, what angle do you get? Rounding to the nearest 10, not to the nearest whole number. 100.3. Do we all agree? Yeah. Any objection? Okay. And so, yeah, you know, if you see this angle, it is close to 90, but it's a little more than 90. It's a little obtuse. It's a little obtuse, yes. Definitely. So we're going to write the following definition, and this is going to sound a little bit weird to you, but it is true. So we're going to say that two vectors are parallel when, are you guys ready? Yes, yes. When the angle we call the angle between them theta, when the angle theta between the vectors is zero or 180. So to the contrary of what we know about parallel lines, and that's why I say it sounds weird, okay? These are parallel lines, right? Yes, you know that your whole life. The parallel lines intersect? No. No, it depends on okay. <laughs> geometry. If you talk about spherical geometry, you guys know those lines that form the, what are they called? The pumpkin? The orange? <laughs> Cylinder. Okay. Sphere. Strings. Anyway, all those lines, all those lines, Intersect, they're parallel, but they intersect at the poles. No. Yeah. Globes. Um, oh, yes. Globes. Oh, yes. They're, they're not, okay, the geometry that you guys study here is called Euclidean geometry. There are other types spherical and hyperbolic. Anyways, anyways, going back to vectors that are parallel. So here's an example of them. And I know it doesn't make sense because it's not like your lines parallel lines, right? But these are two vectors where the, the angle between them is zero. And the angle between these two is 180. Now, let's see that they might look similar to you because they're just forming a line, correct? So what's different between example one and example two? Direction. Arrow. Arrow, direction, yes, that's exactly what it is. And so if you see here, both vectors are going to the right. And so the angle in between them is zero. When the vector is going opposite direction, we say that the angle in between them is 180. Now, whenever either or happens, we could call the vectors parallel. Now, if the angle between the two vectors equals 180, it's kind of like the converse of that. Then the vectors, not the shoes. Like the if P implies Q, the converse will be if Q, then P. That's the converse, like the reverse. Okay, so that implies that the vectors are parallel. Now, when the vectors are uh, when the angle in between them is exactly 90, then the dot product is zero and it's as the following. And 
the vectors are perpendicular. And why do we care about vectors being perpendicular? Well, it is because when a vector is perpendicular to another, the forces, depending on the magnitude, the forces are going to be more, I'm just going to say for now, balanced. Like, it's to find like an equilibrium. So for example, do, does anyone have a skateboard? No? Yeah, so for example, I wish yeah. I had my son's skateboard right now. So for heels? example, he yes. has, you have it? It's in my car though. Oh. Well, we don't have bring time. Bring Wednesday. Bring it Wednesday. Yes, bring it Wednesday, and I'll show you the what what I mean by that. So you know when you try to like lift it, right? Without it, Ollie, Seven. whatever. Ollie. Like you lift <laughs> Ollie, whatever. You lift it, and then like he was trying to do something with the lifted, like turn, oh. but he was falling, and now that's what I was saying. Your center of gravity is not perpendicular to the ground and that's why she couldn't because his body was like this right so your center of gravity is like shifted so what you do with the projection the one that i told you i almost cried that you kind of force your center of gravity to be projected so that it is perpendicular with the ground and so in physics that is like very very important for some reason Okay, so we have like about three minutes. Let's just check this problem quickly. And so let's do the following. To determine if two vectors are orthogonal, we're going to check their dot product. That's it. So write it down. Check if the dot product is zero. So not theta, but zero. Okay, so let's see. Let's do that quickly. So we take the horizontal component, 6 times, here is a 1, plus negative 3 times 2. Okay, 0. So 6 yeah. minus 6, 0. So because of that, we say yes. The And, I mean, I didn't want to spoil it for you, but we have that picture there with our writing. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so because the dot product is 0, the vectors are orthogonal. We could say... B and W are orthogonal, which means they're perpendicular. And that also means that the angle in between is what? What's the angle in between? Not zero. 90. 90. Because we want it to be perpendicular, right? The dot product is zero and the angle is 90. Okay, very good. Very good job. We'll stop here.